What is up VR lover? Today we are going to have some fun with physics and VR in Unity by remaking the Spider-Man swinging movement. As always, the source code is available on my Patreon, so if you'd like to support my work, feel free to join our awesome community, the link is in the description down below. But without further ado, let's get started! Before starting, a big shout out to Dave Character Controller Tutorials, which was super helpful on making this thinking mechanism work in VR. I will link his channel in the description. Okay, so here we are in a simple Unity project. Now, I know this is supposed to look like a CD, but it looks really bad. Now, anyway, as you can see, on this project, I already added a joystick continuous movement with jump to my XR origin. So very important, this continuous movement use not a character controller, but a rigid body, which is necessary for making the swing movement that we will learn in this tutorial. Now you can learn how to do this from the VR physics tutorial that I made on this channel. And I will leave in the description below this rigid body continuous movement that I already added. Now, anyway, as you can see, we can move and jump on the top of the building, but let's try to shoot some web and be able to swing as well. Okay, so now let's start on our swing movement. For this, I'm going to select the left hand located under the XR origin. Right click and create an empty game object that we can call swing. There you go. I'm going to add a script of the same name by clicking on add component swing and create a new script. Okay, now let's double click on this script to open it in Visual Studio. Perfect. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is check the swing point with a raycast that will start from my right hand. To do so, we can create a new function that I'm going to call public void get swing point. Perfect. We can already call this get swing point in the update function as we want to call it every frame of the game. And now, of course, to check a swing position, we are going to use a raycast. So to use a raycast, we first need to create a new raycast it that we can call raycast it. And then we can call the physics.raycast. This function takes a lot of parameters. The first one is the start position. So at the top, I'm going to add a public transform called start swing end. There you go. Another parameter that the physics.raycast need is a max distance. So we can, of course, add a public float called max distance and that we can set initially to 35. And the last thing that it needs is a layer mask, which will be the layer that the raycast will use. So all the objects that will not be on this layer will not be checked by the raycast. Now we can create a public layer mask called swingable layer. Perfect. And now with all of these three parameters, we can create a recast that goes from the start of the end with start swing end dot position. And then that goes forward. So in the forward direction of the start swing with start swing end dot forward, we can then give our recast it as the output of this recast then our max distance, and finally our swingable layer. Perfect. And the last thing that I'm going to do is add at the top a private boolean called as it. And so if we set the as it to be the physics.recast, it will tell us if we have it something or not. There you go. Now with this, we should be able to know if we have found a swingable point or not. Now, in my case, to be sure that I found something, I'm going to set a vector 3 at this hit position and place a prediction point at this exact location. So for this, I'm going to go at the top and add a public transform called prediction point. There you go. And a private vector 3 called swing point. So in our case, if we have hit something, it means that we can set the swing point to be the recast it dot point and that we can enable the prediction point so we can do prediction point dot game object dot set active true and we can do prediction point dot position equals swing point perfect now in the case that we have not found something we can simply set the prediction point game object to set active false and there you go, already with this, we should be able to check some position that go straight from our right end. So let's go back to Unity to see if this works. 
Okay, so in Unity, let's set up this swing component. For the star swing n, we can directly drag our swing over there. For the max distance, 35 is good. And for the swingable layer, I'm going to set it to default because as you can see, all of the objects are set here to the default layer. But make sure that the swingable layer is not taking the player layer, which I added in my game, because it means that you could basically create a swingable point on the player, which is not what we want. We want the swingable point to only be on the environment, which is the case in my game. So anyway, for the prediction point, it is missing. So we can right click under the swing, go to 3D object, sphere. There you go. This will create a sphere as a child of the swing object. And we can maybe set its size to 0 0.05 on all axis. Perfect. Now let's double click on it. There it is. Okay, so maybe 0 0.05 is a bit too small, so let's do 0.1 instead. And as we don't want any collision with it, we can remove the sphere collider. And I'm going to create a new material called white unlit. And we can go then to universal render pipeline unlit to set the shader of this material to not take any shadow into consideration. And we can finally drag this white unlit on our little sphere. Perfect. Last thing I want to do is uh, rename this sphere prediction point and drag this prediction point in the prediction point variable of our script. Perfect. And now with this, let's see if we can find some point on our building by clicking on play. Okay, so as you can see, if I point my right hand to one of the building or one of the floating cube, we can see the prediction point sphere appearing and correctly showing at the good position. And when I point it at the sky, for example, nothing shows. So the raycast checking is working. But now, of course, we want to use this prediction point as a swing point and use it to swing from building to building. So let's see how we can do this. Okay, so back to our script. The first thing that I want to do is listen to the player's input when he wants to start swinging. So for this, we can go at the top and add using Unity Engine dot input system. There you go. Now down below, let's create the action that the player will use to swing. So mine will be an input action property of name swing action. There you go. And now in the update function, after getting the swing point, we can check if the player has pressed the swing action with if swing action that action was pressed this frame. There you go. And then else if swing action dot action was release this frame. There you go. And in the first case, we want to start swinging. And on the second one, we want to stop swinging. So let's create two new functions, one called start swing and the other stop swing. There you go. We can already call the first one in the first case and the second one in the second case. But now is the big question. How can we swing in Unity? And the answer is with one of Unity's own physics component that is a spring joint. So a spring joint will act as a rope between the player rigid body and a particular point. And it is with the joint that we will be able to swing and to customize its component to have our target behavior. Now, anyway, to do so, let's first check that we have it something with if as it, there you go. So if we have it something, what we want to do is add a spring joint to the player's rigid body. So let's go at the top and maybe add a reference to the player rigid body that I will call player's rigid body. There you go. And while we are at it, I'm going to also add a private reference to the spring joint called joint. And then let's create this joint on the rigid body with joint equals player rigid body dot game object dot add component of type spring joint. Perfect. Then let's do join dot auto configure connected ensure equals false. And finally, let's set the connected ensure to be the swing point. Now, by doing so, we will make sure to create a rope, a physically accurate rope between the player and the swing point that we have checked in the get swing point function. Now, anyway, this is the part where we need to uh, set the setting of our joint. 
there are multiple settings that we need to take into account. And the first one is the maximum distance of the joint, which will be the distance at which the spring joint will try to keep the player. And in our case, this distance is basically the distance between the players and the swing point that we can get with distance equals vector 3 dot distance player rigid body dot position swing point. There you go. Now we can assign this new distance on the join with join dot max distance equals distance. And now the other parameters of the joint are the spring, which is the force that will try to pull the player to the swing point, the damper, which will try to decelerate the player, and the mass scale. Now you can try to tweak all of these settings yourself, but in my case, I found out that a value for the spring of 4.5, a value on the damper of 7, and finally a value on the mass scale to 4.5 works well. So let's keep it this way. But of course, feel free to customize this on your own. And there you go. Just like this, we have created a joint for our player, which will make us swing on the swing point. But in the case that we want to stop swinging, what we can simply do is destroy our joint. Perfect. Now, another thing that I want to make sure is that we have not currently a joint when we want to get a new swing point. This will make sure that only when the player is not swinging, we are trying to get a swing point. So let's do if joint return. Perfect. And there you go. This should be it. Now let's save our script and go back to Unity to see if this works. There we go. So the first thing I want to set up is the swing action, which will be the action used to trigger the swinging. So let's click on use reference. And in my case, as the swing is located under the left hand, I'm going to use the left trigger button on the left controller. So this action is currently binded to the left activate action that we can see here. So let's double click on it. Perfect. And for the player rigid body, I can simply drag the XR origin, which has, as you can see, a rigid body on it. There you go. And with this, everything should work. So let's see if this works by clicking on play. And as you can see, it works well, but there are two little problems. The first thing is that the prediction point is still appearing here. And the second one is that I think it could be cool if we can draw the rope that goes from the player to the swing point. So let's see how we can do this. Okay, so to hide the prediction point if there is a joint, we can simply get in the swing point here. And if we have a joint before returning, we can do prediction point dot game object dot selective balls. There you go. But now it is time to draw the swing that goes from the player's end to the swing point. So to draw the rope, I'm going to use a line renderer. We can go at the top and add a public line renderer called line renderer. Perfect. And down below, I can create a new function called public void draw rope. Now, in this function, if there is no joint, we can disable our line renderer with line renderer dot enable equal false. Now, in the case that there is a joint, what we want to do is enable the line renderer to true and then set the number of position count to two. With this, we'll be able to set the two position used by the line renderer. The first one, of course, needs to be the start swing hand dot position, and the second one, the, the swing point. So let's do set position one swing point. Perfect. And now what's left is to call the draw rope in the update function up here. And now let's go back to Unity to see if this works. Okay, so we need, of course, a line renderer. So what I'm going to do is right click on our swing and create an empty game object again called line renderer. Perfect. We can add the line renderer component on this object. But as you can see right now, it is pink because it has no material. So we can go here to materials, click here and search for line and set it to be the default line. Now we can change the size of this line renderer. And in my case, I'm going to set it to something like 0 0.05. I think it would be nice. Perfect. And if you'd like, you can, of course, click on color here and, change and set it to any color that you'd like. But in my case, I'm going to keep it simple and keep it white. Now, anyway, let's go back to our swing component and drag our line renderer over there. And now if I click on play, 
Okay, so here you go. As you can see, if I point my left hand to the floating cube right there and that I press on the trigger button, amazing, I can see the rope that goes from my left hand to the cube. And now, as you can see, I can start swinging. This is perfect. And with this, we are almost down. But there is something cool that I think should improve our rope mechanism. And it is to shorten the rope length on the player's input. This will allow us not only to better control the movement of the player, but also to increase his velocity when the player wants to. So anyway, let's go back to our script. And now to shorten the length of the rope, I'm going to create a new input action, which I will call pull action. Perfect. And I'm going also to create a new public float called pulling strength that we can set initially to 500. And now let's create here a new function that I will call pull rope. There you go. So if the pull action dot action is pressed, it means that we want to reduce the maximum distance on the spring joint. So for this, let's first get the direction that goes from the player's hand to the swing point with direction equals swing point minus swing end dot position and we can add some parentheses and do dot normalized so that this vector 3 will have a length of 1 and then we can add to the player's rigid body a certain force that goes in that direction so let's do add force direction multiply by the pulling strength multiply by time dot delta time there you go and now after adding some force to the players that will pull him to the swing point what we want to do is update the maximum distance of the joint which we can do in the same way that we done here down below so let's copy these two lines and paste them back here there you go and with this, we should be able to pull on the rope. But of course, we need to make sure that there is a joint that we will use to pull. So at the top here, make sure that if there is no joint, we return. Perfect. And now what we can do is pull the rope and call this action in the update function. There we go. Now let's go back to Unity. And finally, let's set up the pull action by clicking on use reference. And in my case, I will set it to be the left end select. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, I can still shoot a rope, but when I press on the left grip button, as you can see, it shortens correctly the length and it pulls me directly to the swing point. And as you can see, we can use it as well to move. But of course, at this point, our swing mechanism needs also one more thing, and it's to be able to shoot from both ends and luckily for us, thanks to the physics system by Unity, this will be automatically handled. So what we simply need to do is select here our swing game object, press on Ctrl D to duplicate and drag it under our right hand instead. Now here, as you can see, the only thing that we need to change is the swing action. So here for the swing action, instead of the left hand activate, we want it to be the right hand activate. And instead of being the left hand select, we want this one to be the right hand select. And there you go. Now, thanks to Unity uh, physics system, because even if we are shooting and adding multiple joints, the physics system will add all of the force and will update our rigid body accordingly without us doing anything else. So let's click on play to test or final results. And there you go. As you can see, I can point a prediction point on both my hands and I can shoot a web from either my left or the right hand. And as you can see, everything is working well by default. The rigid body is updating with both joints. So everything is working well. And as you can see, this is pretty satisfying. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, feel free to subscribe and like this video down below. The source code of this project will be available on my Patreon. So if you'd like to support my work and get access to exclusive content, join us. The link is in the description. Now, thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.